Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalms 113. Psalms 113. We're going to look at verse 9. Psalms 113, verse 9. Psalms 113, verse 9. The title of the message comes from verse 9. A joyful mother, a joyful mother. Psalms 113, verse 9. The Bible says, He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. And Father, thank you for so many, for people here that had a godly mother. And I could think of my own mother and everything that she's been through. And she still was faithful to you and decided not to leave us. And despite all the hardships that she went through, she still stuck it out and still was faithful. And even at the times when I remember living in a shelter, I would just see my mom crying and say, Mom, what are we going to eat? And she would say, just trust in the Lord. And during those times, it really taught me a lot how to really trust in you and come before you and say, Lord, remember the times when I was, when I was hungry, the times when we had nothing to eat, but my mom always said, trust in you. And Father, thank you so much for godly mothers, Lord. I pray that you be there for this message. I pray that you speak to us, Lord. I pray that it will be a blessing. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 A joyful mother. Today is Mother's Day here in America. And mothers have a great influence, probably the biggest influence on children. A lot of times you are who you are because of your mother. If your mother is a great example in your life, you are probably a great example in your life. If your mother was or is a bad example in your life, you are most likely a bad example in your life. Mothers may not be responsible for kids who don't follow your example, but you are responsible for the example. As a mother, you, a lot of times, determine how your child is going to be. And there was a story. There was a prisoner killed people and about to be executed. And a preacher went to witness to him. They go, you want to talk to me, you know, about salvation? He cusses at him, blankety blank, I don't need you. Hey, you know, you're about to die. Don't you want to talk about your eternity? Blankety blank, I don't want to talk to you. You know, I'm here because, you know, your mother sent me to you. And he started opening his mouth. Okay, come on, talk, preacher. And then preacher gave him all the things, you know, salvation plan. But the guy goes, you know what? I don't need it. I want you to tell my mother, you blankety blank, you blankety blankly blank. Preacher, you know why I'm here? Because when I was little, when I was growing up, my mother, she taught me how to smoke. She taught me how to gamble. She taught me how to cheat. And she taught me how to do everything. Go tell that blankety blank. And then that's it. And he just died, and he got executed. Before his execution, he's the you know guard said, "What do you want? Just give me a cigarette, and let it. Let's get it over with." I mean, that's a great example of what kind of influence a mother can have on their children. I mean, if you are a mother, just remember, you are responsible for the example that you set on your children. Many times, men will be, you know, out there working, or men will just do man's thing. Men and women are created different. Woman, as a mother, you will take care of your children more than your, you know, husband. Many times, right? But then we have different situations there, right? You know, you don't have a father, right? You know, whether father passes away or whatnot. You know, there's a lot of different circumstances. When those circumstances do happen, then as a mother, you have greater responsibility. And I give a lot of credit to, you know, all the single mothers who have to take care of their children as well as, you know, make a living. You know, it's a 
very, very hard job, right? Man, I don't know since I'm not a woman, but seeing my own mother and all the mothers around me is probably the biggest and hardest responsibility a human being could have. Then you have to understand how precious mother is. And if you're not a mother yet, if you're a child, you're a husband, then you should be appreciative of your mother and your wives as well. It shouldn't be only Sunday, Mother's Day, that should remind you of Mother's Day. You know, we always talk about it, right? People tend to forget every day of the year except for those, you know, celebrated days. Whether it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, and CEO crowd out there, right? But something about mother where you have to, you know, be appreciative. And as a mother yourself, you have to understand what you are, who you are, and how big of a responsibility you have as a mother. And if you really want to understand love of a mother, this is a terrible, I mean, this is a parable. I mean, it's a terrible story, but it's also a very, how should I say, if you are a mother, I, I know you could relate to this story. And again, it's a parable. It's about a young man who fell in love with a very wicked woman. That fellow's mother, a joyful mother, warned him about that woman. So if your mother warns you about somebody, you know, pay attention. And that wicked woman hated that guy's mother, a joyful mother. For whatever reason, you know, young man, I mean, if you are, married, if you are dating someone and they hate your mother, you know, there's a problem, especially if your mom is a joyful and godly mother. One day, that woman tucked her boyfriend into murdering his mother. She said, I won't marry you until you kill that woman and bring me her heart. So he did. He killed his own mother and cut her heart out. As he was carrying it down the street, he slipped and fell. As he did, his mother's heart spoke and said, are you all right, son? That's a parable that a mother will always love her baby, no matter how bad he gets. You know, mother's, you know, love is, you know, amazing. Yes. You know, even if a child is the worst person in the whole world, to her eyes, you know, that's, the, that's my baby. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't care if he's a murderer. I don't care, you know, he's a convict, criminal. You know, that's, that's my child. That's why there is a great need for joyful mothers. Think about it. I mean, if you are disgruntled mother, if you are discontent and griping about everything all the time, don't be surprised. And you should expect to have a miserable children. Right. I mean, a joyful mother will have a joyful children. Yes. Goes hand in hand. Disgruntled, discontent, right, griping, then you'll have a miserable children. If you have a biblical outlook in your life, that will be reflected on your children. If you don't have a biblical outlook in your life, that will also be reflected on your children. Then who is the author of joy in the first place? It's not me, it's not you. The author of joy is the creator of the heaven and the earth, Amen. right? And God, who laid the foundation of the earth, gives joy, right? Then as mothers, who are you going to seek joy from? First thing, you're going to seek that joy from God. Don't seek that joy from your children. Don't seek that joy from your husband. Don't seek that joy from anybody else. Don't seek that joy from your house. Don't seek that joy from your materialism. Don't seek that joy from your beauty. Don't seek that joy from diamonds or anything out there. You have to first, number one, you have to seek joy from God. When you don't seek joy from God, you won't be a joyful mother. Because you're not asking someone who could give you that joy. Amen. It's like, you know, I could give you this chocolate chip cookie. 
and I'm the one who could give it to you. You ask everybody else in this room, you are not going to get it. And then you know the answer now. All you have to do is come to me, and I'll give it to you. As a mother, don't try to get joy before you try to get joy from God. Don't go to, you know, expect to get joy from your children. They're going to disappoint you, right? As a human being, you're going to get disappointed, and you will disappoint. Don't try to get joy from your husband, right? You already know you are shaking your head, you know, agreeing with me, right? That's the truth. Yeah, you already know, right? I mean, a lot of times, you know, you're disgruntled, discontent, griping because of your husband, right? And then as a man, you know, if you're a married man, you have to take that responsibility. You have to understand why your wife is, you know, not joyful. You know, it might be many times your wife is not joyful. Then, of course, you always say problem is with that person, yes. Ultimately, the problem with that person, but you probably had a lot to do with it. You probably had a lot of hand into it. Then you have to understand, a joyful mother, it's not just a solo work. It's got to be coming from the family. And if you're a husband, if you don't have a joyful mother, you know, mother of your children, then something's wrong with you. I mean, even if she's, you know, naturally depressing, but I don't think you thought she was a naturally depressing person when you got married, right? You know, till death do us apart when you guys are, you know, up there agreeing. I, I haven't seen anybody, you know, depressed and frowning <laughs> when they're, you know, exchanging vows, you know. You know, and when they're, you know, they turn around. Have you ever seen, you know, in a marriage, and don't be a smart aleck, you know, there's always one in a million, you know, where it's bad. But, you know, naturally speaking, when they turn around, do you ever see them, like, crying? I mean, you see them crying, okay? You ever see them, like, frowning and so sad? No. no. They're happy. That might be their, you know, best day so far in their life you know, after they got saved then you understand that your wife can be a joyful mother. Then, as a husband, you have responsibility. Then you have to understand, am I doing you know, good in the sight of God to help my wife to be a joyful mother? As many of the preachers preached in the past, men and women are different. Mothers are very delicate. Mothers are not single women. When you're a single woman, you have much more freedom. You have less responsibility. But once you get married and you start having children, you have so many other things to worry about. So many things goes into your head. Yes. You have to think about your husband, your children. You have to think about you know, paying the bills, food, cooking, everything out there, then it's literally a whole lot of responsibility. And as a mother, you have to understand, you know, when I become a mother, responsibility just comes naturally. And going back to it, and this joy, being a joyful mother, this joy is a gift from God. Whenever you think about word joy, it comes from above. It comes from God. Yes. Think about it. It comes within through Lord Jesus Christ. Joy is not something that you're just going to go and grab. Right. Joy comes from God. You know, Paul and Barnabas told, told those pagans in Laconia that created, God who created everything, Fill their hearts with food and gladness in Acts 14, 17. What does that show? God brings happiness and joy to unsaved people as a testimony of his goodness to them. If you enjoy a good meal, you got it from God. Don't ever forget it, right? I mean, how many times have you really thanked God and you're joyful when you're enjoying a great meal? Man, all you're doing is, man, man this, they're good cooks, right? Great chef, you know, man, 
But when was the last time you were like, man, thank you, God, for giving me this joy from this good meal? Right? And that's why you young people are so spoiled. You're wretched breads. People who weren't saved back in the 50s, 40s, you know, they were thankful. They were appreciative. Man, you growing up in America has spoiled you so much. Yes. Try to be in Africa. Yes. Try to be in those third world countries. I, mean, I saw a very terrible photo. It's going around. They compare a, I'm not, okay, don't get me wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong, but it was either eight year old or 12 year old boy comparing with the normal. Man, that eight or 12 year old boy looked like a three-year-old baby because th he was so malnutrition. When those kids, people who grow up in those third world countries and they receive, who grow up in orphanages out there, and they receive that food, they get great joy out of it. And they're going to give that joy and glory to God. He made the food taste good and gave you the physical equipment to enjoy it. Man, there are a lot of people Right? Because of this corona and everything, you know, lose sense of taste, right? Yes. You can't smell. And those people, one thing they complain is that, man, I can't enjoy food like I used to. Man, have you ever thought about, you know, giving glory to God? Have you ever thought about that joy that, you know, when, when people eat good food, people start smiling. You feel good. You know, it's like people leave to eat good food. Some people, or a lot of people, and you don't realize that that joy is actually from God. Amen. So you got to remember that first thing is first. Joy is a gift from God. Then, you know, we always say, you know, bless you, brother, bless you, sister, right? God bless you. Then all those blessings, where do you think it comes from? It comes from God. Amen. Then what is a blessing anyways? You know, you always say, help me to be a blessing to you. Help me to be a blessing to her, him, right? Blessing is something that makes you happy and brings you joy. Simple as that. You make me happy, right? You make me joyful, then you're a blessing to me, right? Joyful mother, who is a blessing to his children, is whom? Who makes him happy and who brings him joy? Joyful father is whom? Fathers are who bring their children and wife happiness and joy. Then you think about yourself, mothers and fathers. Do you bring happiness and joy to your family? Do you? I mean... Don't think too hard, okay? Then probably you're not, right? Because you can't think of it right off of your bed, right? Because you don't see too much joy in your you know, wife's or your children's face, right? That's why you have to think, man, when was the last time you know, kids really smiled at me? When was the last time kids were really happy, right? Being with me, right? You have to understand. Blessings come from God. Blessing is something that makes you happy and brings you joy. Then think about what kind of mother, as a joyful mother, do you make your children happy? Do your children have joy because of you? you know, maybe we should leave all, we should have all of our adults leave the building, only have the children stay. Just honest opinion, right? You know, raise your hand if you are happy, you know, if you are joyful, then you'll see. So now you understand the basic things, okay? Joy and blessing comes from God. Amen. And then you seek those things from God, period. Then what is, you know, and people don't understand this either. Oh man, as a man, you don't understand. I'm a mother, you're a father, you're a man, you don't understand. Hey, maybe that's true. And a lot of times, mothers will go through very, very 
hard stages, right? Yes. And, uh, and it's natural. But as mothers, you can find your comfort and sympathy from God. Amen. If you can't find it from your husband, because they're impatient, because they don't understand like they should. Right. If you can't find it from your children, you know, because they don't have the experience and they're spoiled or whatnot, you have to go to God. Yes. Go to God. Find your sympathy there. Because Lord Jesus Christ was tempted like no other man. He went through every temptation, whether you're a man or woman, could go through. Then you could go to Lord Jesus Christ and find that sympathy. If you're sad, you know, if you're depressed, and if you're going through a tough time in your life, go to the Lord Jesus Christ right away. Amen. And you can get sympathy from him. Yes. Don't try to get it from your husband right away because, you know, husbands are husbands. I mean, there's a simple story, right? They have a child, you know, he's playing football, literally. And, you know, he got into a great collision with another player. And then he has to be stretched off in a, you know, ambulance. Mother's like, oh, my child, my dear child, oh, man, you know, she's worrying and crying. And then you know what fathers say? Man, great job, son. You got to be okay. <laughs> and that's it, right? But mothers are the one who's like worrying, you know, running up and down. So it's different. And you want to get comfort from that kind of people, mothers? You want to go to those dads, you know, who said it's okay, it's going to be fine, you know, that type of attitude people? Because I'm not saying every man, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, men are very, you know, impatient, you know, not as loving or, you know, have an empathy like mothers. Then go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, you know, man, I, I've gone through some hard things in my life, and I need some comfort. I can't find it in my husband. I can't find it in my children. I can't find it in materialistic stuff, anybody. But I know you can give me, you know, that comfort. Then as mother, go to the Lord Jesus Christ right away. And because it is something that will help you in your walk as a mother, and you'll be joyful mother because of that. And you're like, okay, how, what kind of motherhood does God have, right? You know, see, mothers have a way of attending to the little hurts, right? As I mentioned, you know, if you get a scratch here, you know, fathers will be like, you're going to be fine. You know, go get a Band-Aid and put it on, right? Stronger. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to be tougher. Mothers, like, come here. Come here, come here, child. You know, put like Neosporin or Vaseline or petroleum gel, anything, and then make sure that you're fine. And then they ask all the time, right? They're extra, extra careful. And that's the type of character, you know, God has too. Unlike you and I, you know, a lot of men, Lord can attend to the smallest of the littlest issues in your life. And you got to be thankful for that. Amen. And you got to understand, as a man, child, daughter, that your mothers have that quality where they'll be attending to every little hurt, every little issue in your life. Then what should you do as a child, as a husband? You should understand where they're coming from. You should understand that's how they, how they think then you should try your best to sympathize and empathize with your mother, your wife, right? Yes. Then you'll become a better husband. You'll become a better child. You shouldn't be always right off the bat saying, it's going to be okay. You know, of course, you know, you're going to be saying, you know, Lord takes care of it. We know that already. You know, God's going to take care of everything. But that's not what mothers want to hear. Right. They already know. They want to understand that you understand them. I mean, as a role, you know, in a godly household, what is it? There's God, Christ, right? There's, there's man, woman, and children. 
That's the order, right? Yeah. Then if you're ahead of your wife, right, then you have to understand like how Christ is head of a man, he has compassion towards you. And you definitely make more mistakes. Yes. Then shouldn't you have same type of compassion and understanding, grace and mercy towards your wife? Amen. I mean, why, why is it, you know, so hard for you to understand? You can't just stay and, you know, go on this, you know, one way where, I'm a man, she's a woman, that's it. If she's going through these hardships and depression, just let her handle it. I know the Lord's going to take care of it. Then why are you there as a husband? I mean, shouldn't you be that head of the woman? You want to be head of the woman during only the good times? When there are little hurts everywhere, are you going to just stay away? You're going to stay to sit on your couch, or you're going to do your phone, or you're going to just leave the house, you know, do your own thing. I mean, as a husband, you have to think about the characters of mothers, you know. And some of the young ladies here, Floor Terrace, you got to be a mother too. Then when you do become a mother, you understand what your mom had to go through. You know, so don't be a problem in, in her life. That's what she's instructing you as a godly mother, because you're going to receive the same. If you give a lot of trouble to your mother right now, you know, as they say, right, you reap what you sow, yes. right? You know, you, you were a miserable child, bad child, and you know, your child is going to be miserable and bad child. But it's hard to change, but you have a chance to really get right with the Lord. So mothers have a way of attending to the little hurts that a father can emulate. And fathers, understand that. Right? Be a comfort. But if mothers, if you can't get that from your husbands or your children, you know who you could get it from. Go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And fathers, if you haven't been that comfort to your wife all these years, because some of you guys have been married for a long time, you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. You haven't been a good father. You haven't been that head to your wife like you should have been. Then realize and recognize and get right with the Lord. Yeah. Stop complaining and griping. You know, my situation, my circumstance made me do that and behave like that. I mean, everybody could give excuses all the time. Right. Someone out there has it worse than you. Someone out there has worse than that person. Always remember, you don't have it worse. There's always someone out there who has it worse than you. Go to Ukraine right now, okay? And see what, you know, people of Ukraine has to go through right now. What are they going through? I mean, you can't, you, you can't understand if you're not there. Then just admit that you've been a bad father. Yes. Just admit it. You've been a father. If you are so afraid of the word bad, then just admit that you haven't been the father that you should have been. You haven't been the husband that you should have been. Then just go to the Lord, get right with the Lord, and start understand what your wife is, who your wife is, and what kind of character mothers have. Once you do that, I guarantee you'll be a better husband. You'll be a better father. There will be more joy in your household. And what do mothers do also? You know, godly mothers teach out of a book. They teach out of the Bible. Yes. Joyful mothers will always, always read to her children out of this book. Amen. Out of this book. Do you see why, as a mother, you don't have joy? Besides from, you know, being close to the Lord Jesus Christ, go check. Am I reading to my children out of this book? What do, you know, worldly people do, right? They bring out a, some, you know, fairy tale, and before kids go to sleep, they read them the book. Yeah. But nowadays, you know, people don't care about that, right? 
I mean, how many households actually where you know, mothers read books to them? No, they just give them a you know, tablet or a cell phone, right? Tell them to just play with it and fall asleep. Well, that's what they do. Yeah. But as a godly mother, if you want to be a joyful mother, you have to read to your children. You have to spend time with your children, yes. and especially in the Word of God. Amen. Just read them. They won't understand a lot of times, right? They're four, five, six, seven, you know, eight, nine, ten. Just read them. Read to them out of the book of Psalms, Proverbs, you know, minor prophets, New Testament, Revelation. Just read to them. Amen. Amen. You get something out of it, and your children will definitely get something out of it. Yes. That's missing in Christian families right nowadays. When was the last time you read to your children, you know, on their, you know, bed, the Word of God? I mean, a lot of times you probably want to, hey, you know, let's talk about your life. You know, what's going on? You have a boy problem? You have a girl problem? What, what's going on, right? <laughs> Asian families, you know, what grades are you getting? You know? <laughs> what is it? What grades, right? You better tell me specifically, you know. 89.9%, you know, 95.2, what is it? A plus, A, A minus, you know, you know our household can't accept minuses, right? <laughs> so it's either, you know, regular or plus. And it can't be anything less than A. So you, there's no alphabet that starts with B and later. There's only one alphabet letter, that's A. I mean, is that what you do? Or... Do you take out the good book and then start reading to him? Yes. You know, reading, you know, wouldn't it be great if your child's best memory of your child is the days that, you know, when my mother read that book? Amen. Amen. For people who got saved later in your life, probably you didn't have opportunity, you know. What can you do? But people who have little children right now, as they saved, Bible-believing mother, you have that great opportunity and chance. May, as long as your child you know, lives under your roof, <laughs> whether even they're 18, 25, you know, 30, then read it to him. Hey, come here. You know, you know I'm gonna, as long as you're under my roof, I'm going to read the Bible to you. Yeah. You could accept it or you could get out, right? But where are they going to go, right? They're going to stay, right? They're like, they look at their wallet and bank account, okay, you know, I'll stay. I, don't know. I mean, that's your responsibility. I mean, obviously, when you do that, Father's going to come along. I mean, obviously, you should have started from the head, but hey, sometimes mothers have to take action. And because, you know, men are like rocks sometimes, right? You have to break him. Yeah, you have to, you have to bring that hammer and break him, all right? Because unless you do that, you know, they're going to be staying as a rock, right? Yes. Yeah, and then they won't budge or move or break. Then as a mother, you have a great opportunity. And that's something that you have to do on a daily basis. You can't just do it tonight because you heard it in the preaching, right? Like, wow, you know, my mom hasn't read to me in years. <laughs> She's reading it to me today. Let's see how long it lasts. I'm telling you, your children are thinking like that. Let's see how long it lasts, right? You have to prove them wrong. Because you haven't shown it to them, they have every right to question it. Then as a mother, you have to start and start reading and teach out of this book. It will change the course of your child or your children. You know, it's not about making money. It's not about being, you know, having, you know, power in society. That's not the goal right. of a human being who's saved. Right. It's about having the most close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and living in the will of God. Yeah. Your child will not live in the will of God unless, as a mother, you start acting like a godly mother. You have to act like a joyful mother. And as a young woman, now you know what it, how, what it is to be a mother. If you ever complain to your mother about, hey, mothership is, motherhood is easy, 
then you better repent. You better think otherwise, right? Especially coming from the same sex, right? And of course, as a son or husband, now you realize you should be sorry every day, a lot of times, right? You know, you should be like, oh man, you know. But why? Because you love your wife, because you love your mother. You know, it's a cliche, but happy what? Happy wife is what? Happy life. Yeah. Happy mother, you know. Happy house, right? Amen. If mother's not happy, it affects everybody, right? right? You know, it's going to affect, you know, husband, it's going to affect children. Then you have to understand. And what does mothers have? Like, you know, what God's character has, right? Mothers have a way of being patient with an erring child. Mothers, you know, you appreciate your mother so much. Children, understand this. They only see best in their babies. That's the first thing that comes to their sight. This kid might have killed someone, but to his mother, that kid's best comes to her first. Even though she knows that he committed a horrible crime. They have patience. And if you're a mother, I hope that you have patience. I mean, that's an inherent you know, trait that you have as a mother. Yes. You should be patient with an erring child. Child will make a mistake. You shouldn't be that mother who brings out the rod right away and don't give that child any chance to make a mistake. People will make mistakes. People will learn from their mistakes. And if you did not have that kind of patience as a mother, you have to check your, check your heart. See what kind of you know, mother you've been, right? Generally speaking, most of the mothers see the best in their babies. But there are a few out there because they're so selfish. They're caught up in their own ways that they don't even care about their children. That's why, you know, you hear it all the time, especially, you know, teenagers, you know, young girls, they have their babies, you know, you know, put them in the toilet, you know, throw them away in the trash can, right? Yes. And then just suffocate them with pillows, and they think it's nothing. I mean, people, there are a lot of people like that. Right. But you shouldn't be that person especially as a Bible believer, you should have that patience with an erring child. Yes. And as husbands, you should start cultivating that patience. Amen. Right? And you should understand why, you know, my wife is giving the kid, you know, so much leeway. I mean, of course, I'm not talking about compromising, right? If the kid is smoking, you're not going to give him a lot of chances to smoke right. or doing drugs, right? You got to stop at once, yes. you know? But there are certain things, right? You know, you got to be more understanding, you know? I mean, if the kid could have done better, you know, on maybe school homework, you know, give him opportunity to do better, right? right? If, if some other hardships come along their way, try to understand. Try to see the best in people. That's the whole point. You behave and the way you interact you know, shows what kind of person you are, where you want to see the worst in people or you want to see the best in people. Oh I expect worst in people, but I want to see the best in people. Amen. That's what you got to be. I mean, if you don't see the best as a mother, in your children, then who else is going to see best in their children, right. right? You yourself don't see it, then how do you expect? That's why sometimes you're like, man, why is my child like this? You know, I wanted him to turn out to be, you know, graduate from great college, be a doctor, you know, be a CEO, lawyer, but now, you know, he's just living a, you know, not the best life. Because of your attitude in the first place, right? You don't see the best in your child. All you're thinking about is competition with other families, yeah. other wives out there, other mothers out there. Right? You, you don't want to be that mother 
always like, oh yeah, you know, my son, you know, just became, you know, CEO of a certain company, right? Oh yeah, do you see this car, you know, you know who bought it for me? You know, this house, you know, do you see this, right? You know, I mean, if you're truly joyful and saying it out of good heart, maybe even then you shouldn't be showy and, you know, like that, show some humility, yeah. right? Then what's going to happen? When your child fails one day, mm. right? You probably will be so depressed that you never want to see people. Because you already put a paint on your face, right? You know, I'm the type of person who's going to behave this way because my child is doing well. But when my child does bad, you know, I'm going to be hiding somewhere in the couch or behind the bed, you know, you know behind the whatever it is. And you'll never show. That's why, as a mother, be patient and see the best in your babies. As fathers, you know, you can learn too. Yes. See the best in your babies, but do not compromise. Amen. Have patience, right? Yes. You know why a lot of children go bad? Because mothers and fathers have temper. They just can't get out of it. I mean, are you the type of person? Because home is a test of character, not here. I don't expect any of the fathers to go ballistic when they see their child, you know, litter, right? You know, throw like a little paper on the ground, right? I don't think that you're going to do it because there are too many eyes, you know. <laughs> Same thing with mothers, right? You know, you tell the kid, you know, don't do lipsticks as, you know, a church because... You're only in elementary school, right? And then they do it, you know, bad influence, right? I, mean, I, I don't want you to lose that temper. But when no one is around watching you, how do you do it at home, right? When your kid makes a mistake, right? How do you do it? What, what, what kind of, you know, reaction or, you know, ways that you deal with it? Then I could see, I'm not saying it's you, mothers here, but I know that there are people out there who aren't that sweet, kind, gentle person that you see outside. You turn into that monster without smiles. You are that person who constantly fuss with your spouse about everything in life, gripe about everything in life, gripe about every church stuff in life, and all you do is slam the door and just stay in your room and be depressed. You could be that mother. And you might be that mother right now. Then you have to get out of that stage. You have to understand, man, I want to be a joyful mother. I don't want to live like a depressing mother all my life, right? I mean, joy comes from the Lord. Blessing comes from the Lord. Don't try to be different here and at home. You have to be sane wherever you are. And that just that's, that goes for everybody, not just mothers, right? But, you know, I'm, you know, preaching about joyful mothers, I'm you know, emphasizing it more. But as a father, as a child, as a husband, whoever you are, you cannot be different outside of church. Amen. You have to be same whether you are at church or whether you are at home. You have to be the same whether you are at church or whether you are at work. That's test of character, and that really show you who you are. And, you know, as mothers, right, don't try to get, so there's certain things that you shouldn't try to get joy from, right? Don't try to get joy from flattery, right? I mean, men will just lie to you, yes. you know, mothers. Men will lie to you to get something. Right? Yes. And a lot of times those some things are very wicked. Yes. So you have to understand, you know, if people approach you with flattery, especially men, you know, mothers out there. I mean, especially if you're, you know, single mothers out there, you have to be careful. You have to understand, right? Because having flattery and beauty will not bring you joy. So mothers out there, because, you know, a lot of people are so concerned about their beauty, right? The Bible says what? 
Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You know, Proverbs 31, 30. I'm, again, I'm not telling you to, you know, just forget about your features, right? Right? You do have to do your best, you know? You want to be a good example and testimony, right? You want to you wanna be healthy yeah. to do the works of God and be a, you know, good wife and mother to your children, then you have to have a, you know, healthy body. So don't neglect that. But your joy shouldn't come from thinking that I'm so beautiful, right? Your joy shouldn't come from, you know, all about trying to be more beautiful. There are many, many, many in the side of general public who are beautiful, women. And one of them said that her beauty was a curse. She said it brought me tragedy and heartache for five decades. And the, it was famous Hollywood actress named Lamar. If you took off all the makeups off of some people, you see, they're totally different people. Yeah. So don't trust what you see on TV, right? right? <laughs> so as mothers, I mean, it's simple, you know. Don't try to be, don't try to bring joy from, you know, what? Beauty, right? Just keep yourself, you know, healthy. Do what you got to do, right? And number one thing is that you have to fear the Lord, yeah. right? And the Bible says she shall be praised. Right? And don't try to get joy from social positions either. Again, I'm going to this health size side because it's very important. Good health is a luxury. Not just mothers, but everybody. It isn't given to everybody. Think about it. Good health is a luxury. If you have good health, you should be truly thankful to God, right? Go to children's hospital. Go to cancer centers. Go to people around you who's going through health you know, issues. If your kids are in good health, mothers, be thankful. It's not because you deserve it or your children deserve it because God has been merciful to you. God has shown great, great grace to you. That's why, as mothers, keep that gratitude. You know, keep that gratitude for everything that's happening in your life. Keep that gratitude. You know, for your, if your husband's saved, keep that gratitude. Right? There are many families where you know, wife is saved, but husband is unsaved. Right? Stop complaining about your husband not making enough money or any of that. Number one thing is that they're saved. And especially if they're in a Bible-believing church, even better. Should be thankful for that one, right? Your children being healthy, again, I said, be thankful, right? Yes. Again, I mean, I've gone through it, and some of the people here is going through it, have gone through it. Man, good health is a luxury. And you, have to be gra you have to have gratitude for it. And I'll quickly go through then how can you, you know, be a joyful mother besides from everything that I've, you know, talked about. A couple of main things. You have to wage a constant battle against depression. If you're a mother, you have to constantly fight the battle of depression. Because unlike men per se, women, not the young ones per se, Nowadays, you hear a lot of young girls just committing suicide. You know, college kids, you know, high school kids, middle school, everybody's committing suicide, right? You hear more from the woman's side and female side. You have to battle against your depression. You have to. Because woman is so fragile like glass. If something breaks, how do you feel if something breaks? If your most precious, you know, you know glass, you accidentally hit it and then it breaks. How do you feel? Man, you feel terrible, right? Yeah. And sometimes it was your, you know, heirloom coming down from generations of, you know, your house, household. Then you feel depressed. But 
mothers have to wage constant battle against depression. And one of the best ways to whip that depression out of the way is have fellowship with someone you know, who's gone through the same type of troubles. So don't try to do it by yourself. Pray, right? That's why you have brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. That's why you have sisters in Christ, you know? Yes. You shouldn't be gossiping and grappling about each other. You should be actually helping each other and encouraging each other, you know, admonish each other, right? Then go visit a hospital. Vis visit a children's hospital where kids, they're six, seven, eight, and they're about to die because of cancer. I'm telling you, your, your, your idea of depression just flies away. And obviously, you can't go to the Lord, right? Get help from the Lord. Ask, ask the Lord for blessing and joy as you're going through depression. And it's a very, very, you know, true state of many mothers. I feel for it. Because depression is a big problem. And as a woman, understand husbands, right? Your wife will go through depression. It's going to happen or it hasn't happened. And probably you are so ignorant to understand it. They go through depression. And best way to help them going through depression, it's not just saying that everything's going to be all right, God takes care of you. Try to go through it together, right? Try to be that person who helps them go through it together instead of staying away and running away from the problem. Don't be that husband, you know, general, typical husband. Whenever wife's going through trouble, you just run away until she gets right by herself or someone else, right? No, you should be that, you're the head. If something's wrong, you know, then you gotta go help. Compassion. I mean, you have to do something. Long Don't just sit there and do nothing. Yes. And in order to keep joy, you know, as a mother, you have to be in instant prayer. As a mother, you have to pray. You know that Nehemiah prayer? That should be you. I mean, it should be everybody, but, you know, as a mother, you have to be continuing in instant prayer. That means that you're ready to pray at the drop of hat, drop a pin. You have to pray and pray, constantly pray. And as I mentioned, finally, to be a joyful mother, you have to stay in the book. Don't ever expect to be a joyful mother without staying in this book. You have to stay in the book. And this book will give you long vision, long-term vision. Whatever depression, sadness, hardships, obstacles, difficulties, and troubles that you're going through, this book will give you comfort. This book will give you solutions, and you won't be short-sighted anymore. And you know what? Then we'll have more joyful mothers, and you'll be that joyful mother. And you truly understand and be thankful and have that gratitude towards God. Thank you for giving me this joy and blessing as a mother. Let's pray.